Okay, so one of the most common things that you want to do is verify data. In fact, it's absolutely essential, not just for data loading, not just for reporting, but really pretty much for any sort of operation you need to do, including troubleshooting. And as we know, you know, a lot of these big systems, ERP systems, healthcare systems, you name it, they have very, very complicated database schemas that could take days to be able to trace. And I mean days by someone who really understands how to read data models. Um, and even with that, that still, even knowing that still doesn't give you everything that you need. So you need to have some sort of way to be able to determine that, you know, you, to be able to determine the actual tables that need to be hit, especially when it comes to the art of data loading um, and, and, and data verification. You need to know that the tables that you aimed at or that the tables that you basically stuck data in are the tables that are actually hit. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Dynamics AX, but truth be told, this matter could, um, um, this particular tactic could be used for any system, not just AX. And we are going to go ahead and see how to trace and be able to verify tables, see which tables are hit. Now, you guys will see that there really is no one method that can give you a 100% accuracy on this, but this is probably the closest thing that's there, and it's relatively simple. Relatively, relatively simple, definitely. So let's see how to do it, see how to bypass it, and just see just how well, just how much something like SQL Server Profiler can help us. Okay, to begin with, I want you to take a look over here, and this is one of my sample images that I actually built. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring up SQL Server Profiler, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this tool to be able to trace and see the underlying SQL behind some sort of operation. Now, I need to explain something. When it comes to data loading, there is something that's very, 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 very true anytime you want to val validate data. You always need one what I call baseline case. What I mean by baseline case and what I'm saying over there, so go down to Windows Accessories here. What I'm saying right here is that you need, you need to have some sort of knowledge of how the actual business runs, or in other words, which tables were supposed to be hit. So you need to know before you do something, like for example, you wanna create a main account, you wanna load an invoice, you wanna post a payment. Okay, that's great. But you do need to have an idea first of, wait a minute, which tables were supposed to be hit? Okay, let's see how to get that right now. So first things first, let's say that we wanna have a scenario. And let's give ourselves a scenario. Which tables in AX, Dynamics AX, uh, Enterprise ERP system, right, are altered when we add a main account? That's nowhere in any documentation. It really isn't. Um, how are you going to find that out? Are you going to go in the data model and start looking? Well, true, but then you got the code also. And you need to be able to trace the code and be able to say, okay, now the code says hit here, 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 here. Is there a universal fast way? And yes, there is. It is SQL Server Profiler. So our strategy is going to be this. Find the tables in Profiler that are hit. Then when we verify our data loads or our reports, we make sure that we look at those tables. So when we, make, so when we verify that our data loads went to the right place or our reports, we make sure those tables were hit, again, by using Profiler. With our reports, we just know it because we actually write it inside the actual query itself. But for our data loads, definitely. So let's go ahead and see how to do that. Okay. I brought up SQL Server Profile over here, right? And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go File, New, and Trace. Okay, now you connect it to the database that you're going to be connecting to. Now remember, this should not be a production database for, for table tracing. Performance, um, performance can, can, can oftentimes be production. Finding certain errors can oftentimes be production, but for typically for just table tracing, mm -mm, that's development. So a development environment, that is. So you come back and you get that, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click Connect. And this is probably the simplest way to make a trace. I'm going to call this Data Example. And what you do is change the template to tuning. Now, keep in mind, I've been using Profiler for a number of years, so I can definitely say this, guys. 
there you can go so much further but I'm giving you the simple base base tactic over here to be able to find these results many times for example I script out my traces because it's you know it's less performance intensive and whatever else but this works all right now I'm gonna turn around I'm gonna save it to a file and data examples perfect I'll save it on the desktop and there we go so there's data example saved on the desktop and I'm gonna start it perfect now the trace starts and you guys can see right now it looks pretty meaningless but keep on watching notice how the SQL tuning templates giving us these SQL statements over here and you'll be able to see more of that too as we begin but you can see right there for example you know you can see the batch statement well at least it was while it was there before it disappeared but you get the idea it's tracing what's going on okay now that's good now let's see what the application does whenever we create a new account so I'm gonna click on main accounts here now I'm going into AX my enterprise resource system with tons and tons and tons and I mean tons of tables way too many tables to memorize and I'm gonna click on main account now from main account I'm gonna go ahead and click new main account and meanwhile SQL Server is getting busy it's recording everything that's happening because I'm creating a new main account I'm gonna go ahead and give it a name so you see this is my business case so you see you have to have some sort of you have to have someone who has knowledge of the system of what the system is supposed to do so for example when someone normally creates an expense account la 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 this happens they know how to create the account they know how to do things like that I'm gonna go ahead and close it and done I've created my brand new account I come down go down even further go down even further there's trace examples you guys can see okay now I'm gonna stop this so I stopped the trace you guys see how I just stopped it you can see that right off the bat so now I've stopped it because I got the information that I needed at that point that was it that's all I needed I needed to see what was hit and what was being affected in which in which tables okay all right so we're rocking now we have the information we just need to see now how do we actually take that information and massage it a little bit right so that we can actually use it all right believe it or not this is pretty easy so the first thing I want you to do is click file because you see you have to bring it in offline mode right so close close that existing trace that was running just close it all right now what I want you to do is go to file open trace file and where you save that trace find it I saved mine on the desktop I called it data example you'll see it created two different files what it does is it rolls over every five megabytes by default you can change that setting of course if you want to but let me go ahead and click open it'll then tell me that it wants to go ahead and bring in the other file also right it wants to bring all the continuous sequence so yes we want to go ahead and let it do that and let it finish bringing in all those files great wow you like and you might be thinking wait a minute though Brandon this doesn't look like you know this looks the same it does it does but watch this all right now here's the biggest key first of all you've got all this information here like database TFS configuration from where I've got TFS installed the report server database all these SharePoint databases things like that you know and typically just like a real de development system you have all these additional systems that you're not really looking at you just want to look at one database and that is the database that you're using right so what you want to do is bringing my little mouse up as you can see over here I'm bringing it bringing it bringing it bringing it um, I'm bringing it to the left there's this little part called properties there's actually multiple ways to get here but this is one way that I do the most common way click on properties and now on properties what I want you to do is click on event selection and let's filter it to show it show us just what we need to see that's our goal over here so what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna click on column filters then on column filters what I'm gonna do is for name let's put in and we'll give it the name over here I'll call mine Contozo because that's what I'm tracing how do I know it's Contozo well your DBA will tell you or you can just look at it if you know I mean you'll know some sort of way or somebody will know who will tell you what to trace so I'm gonna change that to Contozo now I'm gonna next come into text data and watch this next part here's the logic right here the data that's being changed by that operation right is basically the data is basically data that's having that's being written to in some sort of way or other words tables that are being written to when you write to tables you do it through three different ways primarily insert update delete 
merge also if we're looking at that, but for these most systems, insert, update, delete. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we want to search in text data, which is actually the SQL statement for either, in, for either an insert, an update, or a delete. Only show me statements that only show me um, values here that have either an insert, update, or delete, or are for the I mean, and are for the actual value, um, and are for the database with the value Contoso. Perfect. Now go ahead and click OK. And watch what happens. Yes, it regenerates the file. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Got it. Got it. You could have done this through a SQL table too, but let me show you what you just did. So you wanted to know the question someone asked you right off the bat is this. Which tables were being hit by essentially doing that within this big monolithic ERP database, right? Uh, you can see them. Dimension hierarchy. Make a list. We can tell them now. When you added a main account this sort of way or an expense account, the tables being hit were dimension hierarchy, dimension focused, or dimension focused unprocessed transactions. Then coming back down again, sys server sessions. And then sys cache flush. System sequences, main account, cost ledger, as you guys can see over here, and you guys see I'm just going right down, cost ledger table, and sys last value. Now, truthfully, this is where it helps to also know something about the source system. In this particular case within AX, I know that most of the sysses, the sysses can be ignored. That's core system functionality. Um, but in the particular case, what I did get what I, that I needed was I got to see that for whatever reason, when I do this, I need to be able to see dimension hierarchy, dimension focus, unprocessed transactions, um, main account, and cost ledger table. Those are the ones that I need to be investigating very critically when I bring in data loads for expense accounts in the main account. So that gave me something to look at. Hope that was very helpful. A very simple, quick method. You can go so much further with um, Profiler, but you'd be surprised on what something simple like this can do to help set you straight and definitely make sure that your data loads don't go bad. This is Brandon again. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care.